let's do a little brake check. Everything's secure. That's a lot of noise. My goodness, we left a big patch back there. Welcome back. I'm Tedward, and today, thanks to McGovern Ford in Lowell, Massachusetts, I've got my hands on the new Ford Bronco. I am very excited to have a doors off, roof down driving impression of this vehicle because it's been really hard to get a hold of because there's been delays with chip shortages and now with the hard top quality issues. There's quite a long list and a wait to get your hands on one of these. And that's unfortunate because I really like it. In fact, I was looking at one of these for my next daily driver, but that's okay. We've got one today. This is the Wild Track Edition, so it has the Sasquatch package. That means we've got big 35 inch tires. And of course, these monster fender flares. This thing is just so maniacal on the road. And I'll tell you what, this is one of the few cars that looks as good in person as it did in the press releases. When we first saw this and we saw it bumbling around, bouncing over all these rocks and things in the stock footage that Ford showed, I had some doubts. I thought, no way is it really gonna be that cool. It's that cool. First, let's talk about this one. This one is Cactus Gray. It's an automatic with the 2.7 liter twin turbo EcoBoost V6. That means it makes 310 horsepower, 400 pound feet of torque. And let's take a look under the hood. I gotta say, this is one thing I really don't know if I can forgive Ford for. It's like a barrel of snakes under here. They did not put any type of covering on. And you know what? Maybe I will respect them for that because they didn't fake you out and say, oh, look at how pretty this is with some funky plastic cover and a bunch of foam. No, they just left this all out in the open. And on the passenger side, this turbo is just completely exposed. It's actually kind of cool to get under here. If you wanted to show someone how a turbo engine works, this isn't a terrible way to do it. Now you can get the Bronco in a two-door and a four-door model. This is the four-door. I would have it in a two-door, but really the only downside for me with the two-door is that you only get about a 16 gallon tank when you have the two-door because they can't fit the larger tank that resides in the four-door in that smaller chassis. Kind of a bummer and considering it doesn't get amazing fuel economy, that does make a difference. All right, with the doors off, which by the way, quite easy to take off. I received it with the doors off. Just plug and play and pops right off. In the back, I got loads of room. Obviously not the most luxurious thing in the world being an off-road vehicle, but one of the things that I love about the roof off of this is that there is no center bar. I have the entire world above me and I don't have any obstructions. That means you can genuinely stand up in the vehicle, which you shouldn't do while it's driving. And you start to find all kinds of little Easter eggs in the car because it actually even says Bronco across this back brace. And you can store the doors in the back of the vehicle. I don't have them here with me right now, but we do have reasonable storage space in the back. Although the only downside is that you really can't lock the vehicle with your stuff. I, you know, one thing I would have liked from Ford is if this area could have been a little locked case. So that way you have a trunk within the rear of the vehicle. So that way I don't have to worry about my expensive cameras when I go in to the store. And at about $55,000, $56,000 as this one is specced out, this is a lot of truck for the money and it should probably hold value. And if you're lucky enough, I'm not gonna recommend that. Don't flip your Bronco, man. But if you are lucky enough to get one early, I'm sure they're gonna be pulling a premium on the secondhand market. So, you know what, enough about that. Let's go out for a drive and see how it handles because one of the big downsides about say a Jeep Wrangler is that those monster tires, the outrageous suspension lift, they make it difficult to drive. But one of the better things about this Bronco is that we've got an independent front suspension. In fact, this has really good road manners. The Wild Track would be the top tier if the first edition did not exist, but on the higher tiers, you do get a beautiful lighting package up front, and that does look very good. I'm also struck by the mirror design because that folds right along that front, and it's just kind of a cool arc that that makes. I dig it. I dig this thing, man. Once we're inside, we're greeted with a Ford plaque right here, as well as this little embossed or laser etched American flag right on the Bronco shifter. You're gonna find Bronco logos aplenty. Let's start her up. Very familiar sounds from this 2.7 liter V6 EcoBoost. And behind all of our drive modes, we have our window switches. Not gonna do us much good today with the doors off. Let's go out for a drive. 
I find this to be a great compromise between a winter daily driver and a summer daily driver because you're able to put the roof down, you get that outdoorsy vibe as an SUV, but you also have the capability of snow driving and being protected. Let's roll into it and see what happens. not outrageously fast, but you have plenty of torque to get up and go, especially because you're churning these giant tires. So I am pretty impressed on that front. It definitely has enough poke. Although I prefer maybe driving the manual, I haven't driven that four cylinder turbo yet. So I'm not quite sure how I'd feel having 100 pound feet of torque down on that four cylinder compared to this. Steering is light, although we're getting a traction control warning, probably trying to make sure we don't spin up that inside rear. We are in too high right now, so no worries about the front acting up on us. Other than the obvious wind noise you get being completely out in the open and exposed to the road, there's quite a bit of tire noise, as you'd expect, but not terrible. It's not that intrusive. I don't know if intrusive is the right word. I feel like everything's intrusive in this. I will say though, rear visibility, essentially negligible. Unless there's a tractor trailer behind you, you're probably not gonna see much because that soft top takes up a lot of real estate. There is something very cool about driving around in a new Bronco just because nobody has them. They're so hard to get. Everybody wants one, everybody has orders on them and everyone's waiting. So you do get quite a lot of attention. And for not being a supercar, it is kind of entertaining getting this much attention in a sub $60,000 vehicle. There's definitely a lot of pride in America about the Bronco right now. Everyone's really psyched that it's out. And I think, you know, it's made Jeep quiver in their boots a little bit. It did take me a little bit of time to get used to not having doors. I mean, if you're a Jeep guy, that's something that's probably not that unfamiliar. And I've certainly driven far more dangerous things. But luckily, Ford did not take any shortcuts on safety. Apparently, there are safety regulations that don't need to be met when you don't have doors on vehicles. And Ford went above and beyond and still went with the standard safety regulations. So apparently the side impact on this is quite good. Although, you know, if something is to come directly into the cabin, uh, yeah, good luck. Very subdued exhaust note on this. You don't get any drama when you get into the pedal, which is why I think maybe even the slower manual uh, is okay. I think having that smaller engine might not be such a terrible thing because you're maybe not missing out on the drama of an exhaust note. You're just missing out on the torque. Now, a quick thing to mention is that Although this is not the smaller engine with the manual, the, the manual is a seven speed, but that's a little bit deceiving because it is a normal six speed H pattern. It's just that it has a crawl gear. So you don't have to do any crazy clutch slipping when you're doing off-roady things. So unlike Porsche and GM, where they have a seventh gear for top gear to improve fuel economy on the highway, this actually has a normal six speed with a very short, short initial drive ratio. Let's get out on the highway and just show you what it's like to drive doors off in the Bronco at 70 miles an hour. A lot of tire noise, a little freaky, chucking it into a corner with no doors, I gotta say. But it does handle quite well. Uh, I mean, obviously signs of body roll, not, not to be unexpected, but easy enough to handle, easy enough to drive. And once we're out here, it's a pretty happy place to be at 65 miles an hour. I gotta say, bravo to Ford on the driving dynamics of what is essentially a pretty intense off-road cruiser. This does an amazing job at being a daily driver. 
obviously we have to worry about not just our own road noise, but others' road noise with the with the with the doors off. So if you are doing a long drive in traffic, you know, consider that. Let's see how she passes. Let's get into it a little bit. The 10 speed, relatively quick to respond. Might want a little more responsiveness, but it's nothing bad, nothing that I'm you know concerned about, especially in a truck. That's you know, it's not a sports car. I could certainly live with this day to day. But there you have it. I mean, 80 miles an hour in a Wrangler used to be kind of a scary thing. It's a little better now with the current generation Wrangler, but it's still not something that I, I prefer to do. And it feels like you've really got to use a lot of power in the Wrangler to get it up and go. Now, of course, Jeep just come out with their V8 Wrangler, the 392 Wrangler, but that's a very expensive truck. Uh, you know, don't expect to compare that directly to a Bronco. And I gotta say, as the EcoBoost V6 does a really nice job keeping me feel like I've got loads of torque ready for action on the highway in pretty much any situation, even up to like 80, 90 miles an hour. Even though we don't have that rear visibility because of the soft top stacked up and taking up that real estate, I've got all of the side visibility in the world. I mean, it is quite nice having the doors off of this thing. You can see everything on the highway. And I gotta say, it's a little disconcerting. I mean, the last time I saw the check lines on a highway like this was in a McLaren Senna. This is no Senna, but it does give you a little bit of that experience. Let's do a little brake check. Everything's secure. That's a lot of noise. My goodness, we left a big patch back there. These things just peel away. <laughs> what a hoot. Now, I didn't go full boot, but I definitely got a good feel for what it'll do under braking. Not a scary situation. Good to know. <laughs> If you're wondering, yes, I would like to drive a fire truck very, very much. Oh, there's a Bronco Sport. I feel like a top dog today. The Bronco Sport, of course, based off of the Escape, not nearly as cool as this. Take a look at this turning radius. Not terrible, doing the job, but fortunately, even if there was a curb in my way, I could get over it no problem with my Sasquatch package, yes. The real test for me on this Bronco was whether it was going to be driver friendly enough to be a daily driver. And I think in this drive, I've proven to myself that it is absolutely daily drivable. In fact, it's very confidence inspiring. I love the steering. I like the brakes. It's got plenty of torque. I do want to drive the manual with a small engine just to see, just to know, because that could be a lot of fun. I mean, for me, I know that I want the two door Bronco. I think that's more the vibe. I like that. I dig it. But other than quibbling over what spec you end up with, I think the fact that Ford has made such a capable off-roader that's also easy to drive on the street is phenomenal. The only drawback, of course, fuel economy. You know, you're not gonna be getting great fuel economy in this car. That being said, my current daily driver M3 is no fuel sipper either. So thank you so much to McGovern Ford here in Lowell, Massachusetts for the opportunity to drive this hard to find and highly anticipated Ford Bronco with the doors off, no less. Don't forget to respect the drive, and I'll see you in the next one.